Welcome to the first ever online student development conference. I'm Mariette Harcombe. I'm the chair of the Southern African Archaeology Student Council. With me today, my fellow members of council, Shireen De Bruyne. Hi, Shireen. And Mpumi Maringa. Hi, Mpumi. And then I have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker today for our very first ever online student development conference hosted by the Southern African Archaeology Student Council in partnership with PAST, ASAPA and the University of Pretoria. So our speaker, Mr. Manu Muhadi, is the current Deputy Director of Heritage Policy Research and Development in the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture in South Africa. So Mr. Muhadi holds a BA degree from the University of Limpopo, a postgraduate diploma in Museum and Heritage Studies from the University of the Western Cape, and a postgraduate diploma in Arts with a specialization in Heritage and Cultural Management from the University of the Witwatersrand. In addition, Mr. Muhadi holds an honors degree in African politics from the University of South Africa. So prior to being the Deputy Director of Heritage Policy, Research and Development, Mr. Muhadi held the position as an Assistant Director of Indigenous Knowledge Systems in the same department. He has worked at the National Archives and Records Service of South Africa as an archivist and principal archivist, where he was responsible for information systems. Over the years, Mr. Muhadi acquired knowledge and skills relevant for the management of arts, culture and heritage. So Mr. Muhadi's keen interest and passion in the preservation of cultural heritage is reflected in his extensive professional experience. The vision of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture is to develop, preserve, protect and promote arts, culture and heritage. This vision aligns perfectly with the vision of the Southern African Archaeology Student Society and Council, which aims to support and encourage student networks and development in our pursuit to understand, interpret and preserve the rich history and present, uh, uh, prehistory presented in the Southern African archaeological record. Mr. Muhadi, the Southern African Archaeology Student Council formally welcomes you as our guest speaker for the Student Development Conference 2021. Over to you, Mr. Muhadi. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, for the introduction. Good afternoon. Uh, please allow me to thank the leadership and the organizers of the Student Development Workshop uh, for affording me this uh, platform to address the conference. Uh, my address will be on the topic education and its role in promoting and preserving South Afri Southern African heritage. Since my address uh, is confined to the South African region, known in political terms as the South African Development Community or SADC, it is important uh, if we talk of education to look a bit on the history. All the countries of the Southern African region experienced uh, colonialism. Without understanding this context, it will be very difficult to situate the role of education in promoting and preserving the heritage resources of this beautiful region. Therefore, a close scrutiny of the phenomena of colonialism is necessary to appreciate the degree to which it influenced not only the economic, education, spiritual, and political development of Africa, but also the African people's perception of themselves. According to Maldonado Torres. Colonialism denotes a political and economic relation in which the sovereignty of a nation or a people rests on the power of another nation, which makes such a nation an empire. The assumed power by the colonizer 
is exercised in all spheres of life. In his famous work, Discourse on Colonialism, the poet Amos Say argues that colonialism decivilized the colonizer and dehumanized the colonized. Fanon, in strengthening this point, argues that colonialism distorts, disfigures, and destroy the being and the knowledge systems of the oppressed and the colonized people. Despite the fact that archaeological evidence have confirmed Africa as the cradle of humankind, the continent and its people continue to be entrapped within the existing global matrices of power underpinned by Eurocentrism and coloniality. Uh, this is uh, Njovugacheni Agui. Research conducted within the broader framework of heritage conservation in Southern Africa and uh, UNESCO's World Heritage Education Initiative have already highlighted and acknowledged the role of education. Have already highlighted and acknowledged the role that education can play in enhancing the overall protection, sustainable management and the use of heritage resources. Scholars such as Ndoro, Njovu, Krohol, Pikirai, Skuman have written extensively on the importance of education in preserving our heritage resources in Southern Africa. The role of heritage education in supporting the protection and sustainable management and the use of heritage resources is already widely acknowledged. Institutions such as UNESCO, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property, and the International Council of Monuments and Sites continue to argue that heritage education is an integral part to the entire heritage management practice. Within Southern Africa and notably in South Africa and Zimbabwe, the importance of heritage education highlighted and confirmed by, it's highlighted and confirmed by existing policy frameworks. For instance, the South African National Heritage Resources Act, number 25 of 1999, states that to ensure that heritage resources are effectively managed, section five, uh, subsection two states that the skills and capacities of persons and communities involved in heritage resources management must be developed. It further states that the provision must be made for the ongoing education and training of existing and new heritage resource management workers. These provisions accentuate the, the importance of education in the quest towards the heritage preservation in South Africa. In other words, without the skilling and capacitating of the officials and uh, professionals who work within the heritage sector, the efforts to promote and to protect and to preserve the heritage resources will fail. Increased interest and recognition of the role of education in the heritage resources management has seen conventionally nature has seen conventional nature conservation institutions such as the South African National Parks reorientating its environmental education programs to incorporate cultural heritage aspects. Sun Parks. Smapungubye Education Center. It's a unique case 
in that it incorporates both environment and heritage perspectives, making it similar to what Crow Hall called heritage education for sustainable development. The emphasis and interest on the role of heritage education in the management of heritage resources is not only restricted to South Africa. In Zimbabwe, the recent curriculum changes position heritage studies as one of the central areas of study. Other countries in Southern Africa, uh, Botswana, Lesotho, and Namibia, only to name a few, are also implementing various heritage initiatives. Drawing on literature, it emerged that the perceived roles of heritage education, though wide ranging, revolves around the following. Developing a sense of ownership, identity, and responsibility. Heritage education is considered critical in developing a sense of ownership, identity, and responsibility within communities. Through ongoing education, local communities can develop a sense of identity and ownership needed to encourage them to, activate, to actively participate in the management of their local heritage resources. This is critical within the context of post-colonial Southern Africa, given the region's contested history of colonialism and the persistent marginalization of local people in the management of heritage. In other words, uh, without developing people who understand who they are and uh, what they have inherited from their forebears, it be becomes very difficult to skill and develop those uh, people uh, academically because they have a loss of who they are and where they want to be in the future. Therefore, it is very important to ensure that within the curriculum, one of the tasks should be to ensure that the sense of identity and sense of belonging is understood by uh, the students so that they can be able to pride themselves of who they are as well as what they want to achieve uh, in life. The other point that uh, I argue in this point is that enhancing social cohesion, access, enjoyment, and participation. According to UNESCO and many other scholars in archeology span and the heritage sector, it is acknowledged that heritage education has vast potential to promote equal access and active participation in different and social groups, in different ethnic and social groups in the use and enjoyment of heritage resources. To this effect, it is seen as playing a crucial role in promoting social cohesion and national unity. In the South African National Heritage Resources Act, number 25 of 1999, it, is, it emphasizes the importance of education and awareness by claiming that a better understanding of cultural heritage by citizens promotes reconciliation, understanding, and respect for, and respect among other people thereby contributing to a uniting South African identity. In other words, uh, the professionals that we need to develop who will be the custodians of our heritage should understand that 
heritage is that potential that can be able to bring the people together and uh, allow each and every person to participate in developing this country or this region. The other element that is uh, important that we need to uh, bring in the picture is promoting critical thinking and creativity. Critical thinking uh, and creative thinking are valuable ing ingredients for personal and social development. Within a region like Southern Africa, in which society is constantly evolving, the need to allow the youth to be creative and reconstruct own heritage is of paramount importance. Accordingly, Decon pointed out that heritage education is concerned with both the past and the present, allowing learners to create and celebrate their own heritage. Heritage education is, I mean, heritage education, if properly constituted, can therefore go beyond just the dictation of the past by the older generation to the youth towards critical engagement of learners and, construct, and construction of heritage based on their own viewpoints. In other words, the Southern region is very rich in cultural heritage, where in uh, our education should find ways to include the indigenous knowledge systems of the indigenous people in such a way that the learners from a very early age are able to understand how the four bears have, have been able to sustain their lives, have been able to preserve and promote their cultures in a way that they should feel that they have the responsibility to embrace and defend and protect uh, what they have been bequeathed by their forebears. As you are listening to me, you might be asking yourself the kind of heritage education strategy needed uh, in post-colonial Southern Africa. Well, there is no silver bullet to this loaded question. However, if heritage education in Southern Africa is to be able to perform its perceived roles, enhancing the protection and sustainability of the resources Uh, the following should be considered as fundamental. One, the relevance to the learner's context. Heritage education practices need to be contextually relevant to the learner's reality and the everyday world and everyday world views. And it should inculcate into children a sense of ownership, identity, and responsibility for local heritage resources. In other words, the learners should not feel alienated from the knowledge systems and the heritage that is within their communities. As already noted earlier in, in this sense of ownership and identity, Uh, it is often a, a prerequisite for ensuring sustainability of local heritage resources. Even the learner's interest in heritage education is likely to increase if in, in, in its orientation, the learning process are centered on the issues relevant to their world views or relevant to their surroundings. In other words, we need to bring uh, to uh, 
the learners the context of the setup that they understand. In other words, the context that they are familiar with. And we should bring, we should uh, I mean, develop from that uh, base so that they can be able to, to pride themselves of what they know and what they, they want to, to promote. Uh, secondly, we need to acknowledge the multiplicity of histories. Instead of simply attempting to reconstruct the past, heritage education should involve she should involve in acknowledging the ways in which interpretations of heritage are context bound and value laden. Accordingly, heritage education should not be concerned with whether one piece of heritage is historically more correct or relevant than the other. Instead, it should be respectful of all epochs of history as opposed to undue emphasis on one era at the expense of the other. Heritage education in post-colonial Southern Africa should rather strive for multiple interpretations, acknowledging that there are many histories of the same place. Such education is more enriching and uh, empowering. Thirdly, uh, treating heritage as, dyna as dynamic and evolving. It will be a failure if we don't acknowledge that uh, heritage is, is uh, dynamic, uh, given the context where it is uh, being uh, promoted. And as such, uh, we need to find ways to adapt to the contemporary context and appreciate the, the ever-changing uh, 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 I mean, surroundings that we find ourselves in. Accordingly, heritage uh, representation should articulate the changes and help learners to celebrate, to grieve, as well as to appreciate the past at the same time, allowing them to move forward with a greater vision for the future. As Lowenthal uh, pointed out, not all heritage is uniformly desirable. In Southern Africa, the history of colonization is a reality which learners need to learn about, but most importantly, in a way that helps them to appreciate uh, the history as well as to find time to commemorate the said memories of what transpired to their forebears. The other element that is important uh, when we examine the role of education in promoting and preserving uh, heritage. We need to find creative and participatory approaches. Heritage should not be only the dictation or preserving of oral history to children, but should be student-centered and imaginative. In other words, it needs to ac accommodate uh, what Paul Frey uh, refers as the autonomy of the students. In other ways, in other words, uh, students should feel that they are not confined to the methodology or the epistemology of uh, the Eurocentric worldview, 
but they should be given the freedom to expand and to be creative and think beyond what they have been, uh, what they have inherited from the colonial past. Teaching and learning approaches which provide space for learners to critically engage in discussion about real issues of representation, ownership, and interpretation of their heritages are needed. Allowing students to create their own heritage is important in that it helps them to realize that heritage, whilst historically grounded, is itself a discursive concept with varied meanings and interpretations. Many, making heritage accessible. Her, heritage education should not be perceived as a preserve of the elites and as often misinterpreted the domain of scientists and other heritage professionals. Instead, heritage education should be popularized through formal and non-formal practices for allowing increased access of local people to learning opportunities. Heritage education should promote participation of local communities as well as underscore the importance of using local sources of knowledge, such as oral traditions, myths, and legends. Transformation in the archeological heritage site, I mean, heritage sector remain a challenge and this, and this is not an exception. There should be a, 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 a drive to bring many uh, students uh, in, in the study of archeology span in particular. Uh, given the, the past histories of uh, wars, of uh, dispossession and uh, conquer, many uh, uh, of the formerly oppressed uh, cultural groups didn't find the opportunity to participate in the archeological uh, studies as well as um, in attaining the archeological profession. Therefore, it is very important that when we reflect on the role of education, uh, practical means are provided for uh, those who are interested in studying archeology span to find the platform to, to study and to become professionals in this field. This is very important if we want to transform the sector as well as if we want to tap into the local knowledge of our forebears uh, uh, in a more practical, I mean, practical way. Therefore, uh, to achieve this, we need to embrace uh, what. Uh, and Jovu called epistemic freedom, wherein we are not confined from, I mean, we are not confined to uh, the Western view of subjugating the, 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 
the African people and depriving them the, the equal status uh, of being professionals and being uh, uh, contributors in knowledge production. But we need to provide that platform so that they can be able to preserve and secure and safeguard their, their, their uh, heritage resources. And in this, we will be uh, embracing what uh, the Sosa Santos argues as the epistemology of the South. In other words, uh, the Southern African region equally is capable of developing archaeologists that can be able to practice and provide education that will promote the, the, the heritage resources of the region. In conclusion, uh, let me conclude by quoting the words of uh, South Africa's first democratic uh, president, Nelson Mandela, who said, education is the most important, is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. This power of education extends beyond the development of skills we need for economic success. It can contribute to nation building and reconciliation. Our previous system emphasized the physical and other differences of South, of South Africans with devastating effects. We are steadily but surely introducing education that enables our children to exploit the similarities and common goals while appreciating the strengths in their diversity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohadi. That was a, a, an excellent uh, welcoming presentation for our students. Really, thank you so much for that. Um, really cannot overemphasize the importance of archaeology and archaeological education and heritage in education in enlightening the minds of our, of our people and, you know, just uh, uniting our collective past and, and bringing out more of our, our similarities and our shared identities than our differences. So just in brief, I have a, I have a comment that will kind of flow into just a brief question to you. So what I gathered from your presentation is that heritage education is, is not sh or should not just be about books and degrees and formally training professionals, but heritage education should be uh, a participatory endeavor where um, it should not just be the domain of professionals. We should involve the public. We should involve local communities. And in doing that, or, or to do that, we can take two, of course, two approaches. The first being uh, community involvement, where we are educating and empowering local communities um, who have been disenfranchised by colonialism, who have been kind of put into a box and, you know, they don't actually recognize or acknowledge their, their own valuable um, contributions within within our heritage and, and history and then as a second part public engagement in involving the members of public through education as an opportunity to enlighten those that have been uh, kind of blinded by the Eurocentric curriculums of the past so we kind of have a you know two birds with one stone we're, we're involving communities and we're engaging the public so from that my question um, to what extent, in your opinion, should we include archaeological sites as heritage resources in actual physical educational experiences? Uh, but to put it differently, 
Do you think there is value in archaeological tourism also as a means of decolonizing the minds of people? Thank you so much for the input and the question. Uh, it's a very, very uh, important question that you are asking. And I think uh, it is in line with, uh, I was trying to argue in this presentation to say, uh, if you will recall uh, when the debate of HIV came into our shores, HIV and AIDS, when it came into our shores, uh, there were a number of activism group who were fighting the government to say, you can't make policies on how to treat HIV and AIDS without us being involved. In other words, they were using a slogan which they used to say, nothing about us without us. And in this context, we need to understand that the professionals that we need to train, they should not see the communities and the people in the rural uh, villages as their subjects of study, as their areas of research, or as the other way in they can go and, 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 and explore their skills and learn. But they should see those people as their equals who have a, a very direct role to play in terms of the actual archeological work that needs to be done. They should be equal partners. And uh, even when it comes to uh, the development of tourism, we need not to think only of tourists from uh, overseas or from the countries abroad coming as if they are going to discover the knowledge of the people in Africa. But we should say uh, the very concept of how this tourist destination should uh, be conceptualized should be informed by the participation of the very local people in terms of how it is packaged and, 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 and promoted to, to the, the entire world. In, our, in other words, uh, if we don't take that approach, we will be going in the line of what uh, Maldonado uh, Torres I, whom I, I quoted earlier, refers as coloniality. In other words, we often say we are in a post-colonial uh, era, but our practices every day are still in resemblance of what happened when uh, Africa was first colonized. So we need to move away from that and say, nothing about you without you involved. In other words, you are not the subject of study, but we are in a learning process together. And that's why uh, uh, Paul Frey argues that the students have to have the autonomy. In other words, when you are a lecturer, when you enter the a lecture room. Don't think only that you are going to impart knowledge, but open your mind to say, me too, I'm going to be inspired. I'm going to learn from the very same students that I'm st standing uh, before them. And I think if we take that approach, we will be able to, to achieve a lot uh, as the, the region. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for that response. Yes, definitely. I, I definitely like that slogan, uh, nothing about us without us. I think it's so crucial to include the voices of local communities, you know, as, as active participants in knowledge generation. And also remember to give back to the community in terms of sharing what you've learned about their, about their sites, about their heritage and not you know, writing your reports and writing your articles and not giving back to the community and, and acknowledging their, their participation in, in the work that's been done. Um, any questions or comments from my fellow members of council? Yes, Shireen. Thanks, Mariette. Um, and thank you, Ms. Zimwadi. Um, I have more of a comment. I think, uh, first, I want to start with thanking you for um, your welcome address. I think your, your topic of education and her heritage ties in very nicely with the overall idea and goal um, the Southern African Archaeology Student Council have. Um, in terms of developing students, um, particularly university, um, undergraduate and postgraduate students in pursuing um, archaeology or heritage related careers. Um, and with that, I would also like to thank um, you and the Department of Arts, Sports and Culture for your support, um, not just with this specific conference, but in um, providing students with opportunities. And they've been various throughout the years with bursaries um, and other conference opportunities. So just a big thanks from us, um, and I'm sure all the students participating, um, for your continuous support. Um, we appreciate it, and I think together um, we will definitely make the change we are aiming to do. Thank you so much. Uh, your comments are well appreciated, and especially the acknowledgement of the contribution that the department is making uh, in providing the heritage bazaaris. Uh, it's much appreciated. Mpume, anything from your side? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ntate Mohad, for your, your presentation. It was very insightful. I hope it gets to inspire our students as well as many others. And we are hoping that we can reach um, the public and be able to show them that this is what we're doing, that we're not working against you, we're working with you. And we want to also bring in networking and uh, reinforce uh, relationships between not only Southern African uh, archaeologists, but also African archaeologists and around the world. So we, they can, so all of us can know the potential and the heritage that is just so rich. And we're just happy that you, you are on board and we have a good backing with what we're doing. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for your comments. And um, a note to our students, we have a very interesting and stimulating lineup of presentations in the student conference. Um, some of the topics closely interrelate with what was being discussed by uh, Mr. Muhadi today in terms of public engagement, archaeology and public participation, a few examples of communities um, actually actively engaging in sites, um, some to more extents than we expected. Um, and then, yes, all of the uh, lecture sessions will be accompanied by activities. We have a few activities associated with prizes. So students, please participate actively in this conference uh, because there are some nice prizes and opportunities up for grabs as part of the conference. So once again, uh, Mr. Muhadi, thank you very much today for uh, presenting us with our welcoming address. And we wish you uh, all the very best of luck and um, hope that in terms of you know policy generation that um, through heritage education we can kind of um, promote more favorable um, heritage management policies um, in future so once again thank you very much Mr Muhadi and thank you very much to my fellow council members thank you so much uh, uh, for sharing the session and the last comments you made, uh, it's 
very much appreciated. Uh, just uh, uh, early this year, uh, the cabinet approved one of our policies on repatriation and restitution of human remains and uh, uh, heritage objects. And we will appreciate if you can get the opportunity to get the, the policy and read through as well as uh, review it so that it is enriched. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Muhadi. All right, everyone, have a fantastic day further. Goodbye.